I think some people may have particularly joined today looking at the uh, title, the theme for today. And let me at the outset uh, say this. Uh, I'm not going to provide any dramatic answers that you don't know yet, that you are not aware of yourself. I maybe, maybe will remind you of what you already know and emphasize the importance of these things. I know how horrible, terrible living through unanswered prayer can be for us. And I don't minimize that pain and suffering that we go through. However, let's, uh, let's see what we can do today. God helping us. I'd like to begin by um, <clears throat> um, relating uh, an illustration. You know, in the 1980s and 1990s, there used to be a daily comic strip that appeared in many newspapers, not only in our country, but all over the world, especially in Europe, called Calvin and Hobbes. Some of you will know that well, Calvin and Hobbes. <clears throat> and um, I want to highlight one of them today. You know, it's a comic strip. So it's late November, somewhere in the United States. And a little um, boy is waiting with his sled, sledge for the first big snowfall. So he waits and he waits, but all he finds is brown grass on the ground, no snow. So the next frame shows him, he looks to the heavens and he says, on count of three, ready? One, two, three, snow. Nothing happens. And the little boy is downcast. Then he shouts to the heavens, I said, snow, come on, snow. Then shaking his fists, he cries out, snow. Thoroughly disgusted with God's failure, he says, okay then, don't snow. What do I care? But, but his um, defiance does not last. In the next frame, we see the little boy on his knees offering this prayer. Please, snow. Please, just a foot. Okay, eight inches. That's all. Come on. Six inches even. How about just six? And then he looks to the heavens and he shouts at the top of his voice, I'm waiting. In the next frame, we see him running in a circle, head down, fists clenched, making a little boy sound, ah! That's not an English word, but every parent has ha heard it many times. Finally, the little boy lies down exhausted. And in the final frame, he looks up at God and he cries out in utter desperation. Do you want me to become an atheist? Many of us sometimes feel just like that little boy. Maybe we cried out to God, do you want me to become an atheist? Some have, 
most haven't but they keep the pain inside still believing as best as they can in a god who sometimes answers prayer and sometimes doesn't many of us carry hidden scars from the pain of prayers that were not answered we don't talk about this problem very much many sincere good devout people secretly doubt that god answers prayer but you and i are not the first people to have our prayers go unanswered in fact the bible is filled with stories of men and women who prayed to god in the moment of crisis and god did not answer their prayers in 2 corinthians chapter 12 paul if you have the time please read 2 corinthians 12 Paul reveals that 14 years earlier he had been caught up into heaven taken to heaven and he had seen things that no mortal man had ever seen before it was the greatest experience of his life and he never forgot what it was like but when that great experience was over something else happened to Paul that would change his whole perspective on life to keep me from becoming conceited notice this follows his fantastic experience of being taken to seventh heaven to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations there was given me a thorn in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me i'm reading that's 2 corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 now we don't know what the thorn in the flesh was was it poor eyesight that constantly troubled him i can relate to that was it um you know very close friends constantly stabbing him in the back i think many of us can relate to that well it doesn't really matter what it was the crucial point is that paul prayed for god to remove the thorn in his flesh why so that he could get on with his ministry so that he could go go on and go on his missionary journeys in peace and plant more churches i mean what a wonderful thing what a great request surely god should answer such a request he prayed this in fact not just once but three times and each time the answer was the same god said no can you imagine that think with me for a moment the apostle paul probably the greatest saint who ever lived the man who introduced the gospel to europe and asia the man who wrote so much of the new testament that man when he prayed about his need in his life found that god did not would not answer his prayers he desperately begged god over and over again to answer a very specific prayer and god said no now i don't know about you but this teaches me several important principles 
I know you shouldn't take, uh, you know, bedrock principles from one, a few verses. Suppose we should compare this with the rest of the Bible. But it seems very clear from this that we can say some things with some certainty. For example, we can say, unanswered prayer sometimes happens to the very best of Christians. It is no respecter of persons. Even the greatest saints faced the issue of unanswered prayer. Secondly, when it happens, it is humanly impossible to explain. It is humanly inexplicable or unexplainable. We can do all the research we want, but finally, we cannot explain it. Thirdly, when it happens, God has a higher purpose in mind. We can simply state that, although we don't understand it. God has a higher purpose in mind. God, sorry, Paul kept on praying until God gave him an explanation. And what is that explanation that God gave Paul in this instance? Verse 9, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes our prayers are not answered because God can do more through us by not answering our prayers than he can by answering them. Sounds a bit harsh. Yeah. Sometimes God's no is better than his yes for reasons that we don't understand. I mean, if God always answered your prayers and mine with a yes, eventually my trust, your trust would be in the answers and not in God. But when God says no, we are forced to decide whether we will still trust in God. Yeah. We face a crucial emergency kind of situation. Am I going to continue to trust in this God who is not answering my prayer? Won't he at least give me a sign? Won't he at least give me the benefit of answered prayer to lean on? Give me a little proof that he's listening to me. Unanswered prayer forces us to trust in God alone. And when we do, he alone gets the glory. For it is at that point that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. I challenge you to look at your life as I try to look at, look back on my life. And I realize without a shadow of doubt that my most concentrated times of spiritual growth came as a result of my trials, came as a result of the pain of unanswered prayer. We grow best in the darkness of pain, sadness, and despair. When we walk through that deep valley, when there is no light around us, all seems dark, when the walls around us seem tall and insurmountable, pain, sadness, despair, we learn many things in the best in the darkness. You know, we learn many things, of course, in the sunlight, but we grow best in 
the darkness. I came across the words of a soldier. Um, I think it must have been the Second World War. But listen to the words of what he wrote. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. And he concludes, I got nothing I asked for, but everything I had hoped for. Read that again. I got nothing I asked for, but everything I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among men most richly blessed. True godly Christian character is able to say, I got nothing I asked for, but I got everything I had hoped for. My unspoken prayers were answered. Sometimes our prayers will go unanswered, yes. And that is a fact. And unless I accept that fact, unless you admit that fact and deal with it with God's help, you will probably give up prayer altogether. I don't know how many of you are in this position at the moment, unanswered prayer. And you cannot take no for an answer. The Bible is so full of promises that God answers prayer. So why can't he answer my prayer? Sometimes our prayers will go unanswered. Have I accepted that? Have I really accepted that fact in my life? in my relationship with God, until I do, until you do, you'll probably give up on prayer altogether. God hears every prayer, even the ones he chooses not to answer. And no prayer is entirely wasted, for even unanswered prayer may be used by God to draw us closer to him. Sometimes our prayers will be answered in amazing and miraculous ways. Praise God for that. Some of you have given testimony to that. But at other times, our prayers will not be answered at all. In conclusion, I ask the question, what do you do when your prayers are not answered. What do I do when my prayers are not answered? What can we do? I have no final answers. I want to just give three suggestions. Firstly, when your prayers are not answered, keep on praying as long as you can. Sometimes God's answers are delayed for reasons beyond our knowledge. Who can really say why a prayer which has been uttered 999 times should finally be answered the 1000th time? But sometimes it happens. 
So pray, pray, keep on praying. And as you pray, don't be ashamed to beg God for a miracle. Who knows? You may be surprised to find that in the end, after you've given up all hope, God has moved from heaven to answer your prayers in ways you never dreamed possible. Yes. So keep on praying as long as you can. A second suggestion and a very important one. Give God the right to say no. Yes, you heard me right. Give God the right to say no. In the ultimate sense, of course, God already has that right, whether you acknowledge it or not. But if you never acknowledge that God has the right to say no to you, you will be filled with, with what? With anger, with frustration, with despair. You know, to fight against God's right to say no to you is really the same thing as fighting against God. And that's a battle you will never ever win. Give God the right to say no. How much wiser it is to say, Lord, I'm praying this prayer from the bottom of my heart. I trust you. I pray in faith. But even as I pray, I confess that you have the right to say no if that's what you think is best. You know, if you pray that kind of prayer, you will sleep well at night. When you learn to pray like that, a lot of stress will be reduced in your life. Let God be God in your life. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done, Lord. The final suggestion, three, <clears throat> keep on doing what you know to be right. When God doesn't answer your prayer, keep on doing what you know to be right. In the darkness of unanswered prayer, you may be tempted to give up on God. What good will that do anyway? If you turn away from God, where will you go? Where will you turn? Who will you turn to? There's nobody else. So keep on praying. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on reading the Bible. Keep on obeying. Yes. Keep on keeping on. Keep on following the Lord. Keep on thanking and praising God witnessing of the Lord. Yes, keep on. If you stay on course in the darkness, eventually the light will shine again and you will be glad that you did not turn away in the moments of disappointment. Yes. Sometimes God's no is better than his yes. May God help us all through times of unanswered prayer. Amen.